Right, the 2023 or 2023, if you like, calendar for the Formula One World Championship has been approved and announced by the FIA in the very last hour. Our Formula One reporter, Craig Slater, joins us now. So, Craig, um, quite a surprise. Is there any surprises in this calendar, do you think? Not too many. I'm a little bit surprised it was announced today. I was expecting mm. it in a few days' time, but good to get it early. And uh, 24 races, that's a record total. That's actually the, 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 the limit that Formula One can require the teams to do under the current regulations. Okay. So an earlier start to the season, let's take a look at, at the year, how it unfolds from Bahrain. An earlier finish as well. And the race is happening in a more regular beat. And in terms of headlines, there's a, a, a combination of, of newer tracks and older historic tracks like Imola and Spa in Belgium, which have been under threat. You'll see Monaco in there. There was question marks over its future, but it is going to be on the calendar next year. No France, however, no comeback for Germany either. The big new exciting one, the second last race there in Las Vegas mm. where the title will be on the line. And you'll also see that China makes its return to the calendar after a three-year absence. That, though, likely to be conditional or will be conditional on that country relaxing its current COVID restrictions. OK. What's the thinking behind this, then, this structure? Well, structuring it like this, the, the aim has been to, to try and have clusters of races on a regional basis. So if you, if you were to look at, look at the calendar, you see you, you start in the Middle East, stroke Far East, you come back to Europe, then there's a, another section in the, the Middle East and Far East, then a, a series of races in the Americas, finishing in Abu Dhabi. It's a lot of globe trotting, but yeah. it, it's, it's, it's rather better structured than it has been in the past. That will enable Formula One to reduce its carbon footprint. It aims to be net carbon zero by 2030. With the calendar being like this, they avoided a clash with the, the 24 hour of Le Mans, which is a big race in the motorsport mm. calendar. There are a couple of anomalies. You'll have noticed that perhaps Canada and Miami are, are kept apart, whereas they, they, they could have been perhaps brought together. You've got six double headers and three triple headers, which in a sense is good. It keeps the races coming with a, a regular uh, you know, period of time, hmm. so, so fans will, will remain in touch and, and hopefully the title drama will build over the course of the season. Tough on, on some of the team members, mm. possibly, having 24 in total, having those two triple headers as well, but ultimately good that the sport is in buoyant health. And, and that's what Stefano Domenicali has said. He's the president of Formula One. He said that this calendar shows that Formula One continues to experience strong momentum. And it is great news that we will be able to bring our passionate fans a mix of exciting new locations such as Las Vegas to the championship with much loved venues across Europe, Asia and the Americas. So, yeah, you wonder, is 24 going to be the limit? conceivably will they look to do more but it's, it's coming against I think a, a natural limit in terms of what teams are able to do over the course yeah. of the year without working those team members too hard yeah I'd agree with that okay thank you very much Craig and of course the next Grand Prix this season is the Singapore Grand Prix coverage of practice one gets underway a week on Friday that's in Sky Sports F1 with race day itself on Sunday October the 2nd